Hi guys, I'm pleased to bring you the very first Air Arms S200 TDR. <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure what's happened to this stock, but it wasn't originally... Well, funny enough, the first ones were two-piece. This was made as a one-piece and it's now a two-piece. I'm going to attempt to repair this. It will be a donor for some follow-up videos. I'm going to, down the line, show you how to inlet an accessory rail up the front. And I'll also show you how to fit an adjustable comb slash cheek riser kit. And then we'll start bringing a few of my other rifles onto the channel. So this is a little Ratworks Carbine S200 action that I've had for years. That's what this is going to go on to eventually. And then we'll take this out and do some accuracy testing with this and compare it to some of the more modern guns. But in terms of the repair, this is likely to be one of the most involved modern-ish PCP repair jobs actually. The fact that it's broken right through the grip and also exposed some of the inlet portion which you would see from the top here. It's an unusual place for it to have broken. I mean there must have been a weakness in the grain. The grain all runs straight through the grip so it's not an uncommon place for them to break but I've never seen an S200 Mark III stock break like this. I need to get a fixing down through the grip itself as well now that on most pcp stocks isn't too much of a problem even springer stocks however the s200 is a little bit unusual because from the back edge of the action they have a fixing stud that runs right down through the grip so the grip itself is already drilled so i can't just put a fixing down through the grip what I need to do is remove some wood from the top here to allow me to put a fixing in quite a bit further back in the grip than is really ideal. There's not an awful lot of wood here with that grip fixing bolt and down at an angle. That's roughly where the stud drops through. So you can see here that I've only got maybe 20 mil of wood to get a fixing into which then means that I've got to be super careful that I don't break through this back edge. So it's going to be fairly involved, but I do like a challenge. I thought it'd be fun to film it. It might all go pear-shaped. If it does, I'll still put it on the channel. We'll see how it goes. Right, so the most important part of any repair job like this is working out how you're going to clamp it so that you've got nice even pressure all the way through your broken area. What I've done... I've got just a standard basic clamp here and you can see on the end there that I've glued on a small piece of dowel to the clamp itself and I've put a small piece of foam around that. Now this clamp is going to sit like this. I've also got myself some M6 studding, so that's M6 fully threaded bar. I've made myself up a little wooden sort of clamp guide if you like. So this is going to drop down through the grip like so. There's a little alley bush that goes up into the stock itself. Now you can't just use one of these clamps on its own because what it will do is this one will pull the stock that way. And if you clamp that up and tighten this one up, it will slide these two sections apart. So I need to have the two clamps going across each other so that it stays where I need it to be. The plan is the position where I need to put this fix in is going to be about here. So what I'm going to do is take a cut with the router. I'm going to remove this inside midsection here. A little bit like that. Hopefully you can see that just about. These are big Spax branded heavy duty stainless fixing screws. Now these are normally for decking and heavy duty building. However, these are going to be perfect. So I need to trim the overall length of this down. I've got an unthreaded section here which will work perfectly in the top edge of that stock there. That measures 6mm across. That will go into a 4mm piloted hole perfectly. What I'll do is I'm going to remove the wood out of the top section first, pre-drill this one all the way through at 6mm, then we'll offer the two portions up. Then we'll pilot drill the rear section and hopefully we can get them to line up nicely and actually have it all held together with the screw fixing before we attempt to glue any of this together. At least that way, when we tension it all up, it's less likely to wander and it's less likely to move. So I'm going to jig it up in the vise now. 
um, get the router set up and start chopping some bits out the back here. So I'll do that now. Okay, so the fore end portion now is just clamped up in the vise itself. I can run the router fence along this outside jaw. I've only got to take out a small section on the inside here. I've also clamped on a little piece of wood here, a scrap piece of wood as a stop block, so I can only run up to that, which will stop me from coming in too far. Okay, so you can see I've got a nice little channel cut out the back there. That should now be enough space to get the head of my fixing in. That will sit obviously up the other way, just in from that back edge, so we can then plug over the top of this once it's all in and screwed together. So next thing to do will be to drill down through here with a six mil hole where the fixing's going to go down into the lower portion. Right, I'm gonna drill that by hand. This brake is relatively flat and parallel to the bore and the air cylinder. So what I'll do, I'm just gonna put a small block underneath of this. I need to be very careful that I don't really blow out any more of this than I really need to. I've had a good pick through this already. There's no loose fibers particularly left. If you do have any bits that are loose, generally speaking, you're best off to remove any of those and let the voids be filled with the glue. You don't really want any loose fibers in there if you can help it. but. Of course you need to be very careful around the edges because the cleaner you can keep the outside edges the cleaner the finished glue joint will be so a bit of a balancing act really i've got quite a lot of tear out on this side already and on the inside edges luckily the inside edges you can't see but by the time this is done i'm not going to give this a full strip and refinish eventually once it's done and made good i'll end up painting and camoing this up a bit like my s510 my tactical one so it will cover a multitude of sins, but I want to get a nice solid repair on this anyways. Okay, so I've set the rear portion now into the vise. I'm going to carefully offer up, and I'm going to use my 6mm drill bit. Where's my mallet? There he is. Next thing to do, we'll work in one of these screws, start cutting some threads into the wood. Right, next thing to do, I'm just going to work out the length of the fixing that I need. I'm going to just quickly cut the end off of this and put a much smaller taper on. I don't want a great big long taper like this because I need to have as much thread engagement as physically possible. Right, screws trimmed down. That feels brilliant. And as it stands, we've got a semi intact stock, so now we can prepare it for glue up. Right, cloth over there. You want to get all your bits ready. You don't want to be hanging around, so you just want to make sure that you've got all of your clamps and all of your bits roughly where you know you're going to need them. Now a fun bit, so I'm gonna squadge everywhere. They say less is more, but I think more is definitely more. <laughs> this will clean up with the damp cloth once we've got these clamps on. Right, it's the next day, I've got the clamps off now. I've just had it out in the daylight. I've taken some photos and you can see actually that the lacquer that's on here is not in particularly good order. There's a fair bit of tear out around the crack itself. Now you can't feel it, but you can certainly see it. Of course, going forward, we're going to be painting this one. The best course of action would normally be to do a full strip, take it back to the bare beech wood. You can mix up some beech wood dust to fill the voids, any last little bits, before then fully refinishing it with some stain and oil or even a tinted lacquer. But as we're painting this one, I'm going to flat this back very carefully with 1200 grit. 
these little voids that we've got here, I'm actually going to fill those with super glue um, and buff these back in with some of the dust that we've got here, just purely to give it a smooth over. So the join is structurally sound. The fixing went in lovely. What I am going to do next is this little piece of beach off cut. I'm going to let that into here. So I'm going to do a little bit of shaping on here and then trim the sides off and flush this all in. I'll then probably have to actually sand this edge. That can then of course be primed before it's painted. So, so far we've got a fairly robust repair. It's not the cleanest looking, but then the stock was never in the greatest of order. We'll let in this new piece, get that fixing covered up, and then we'll prep it for painting. Right, I've shaped that up. That's a nice close fit in there. It clears the screw head. I'll rip that off in the bandsaw. I'll leave just a smearging of wood on the outside edge here, then I can flush that in. I might even be able to get a plane in here just to take a gentle skim off, but I think that might be asking for trouble in here. I'm going to actually put this in with super glue. And when I glue it in with the super glue, I'll just dampen up both edges of this and then the super glue will hold that in there beautifully. For something like this, it's perfectly adequate to use Loctite or something similar to that. It's not really ideal in applications where you might get large knocks or anything like that. It fractures fairly easily, but this is a non-load bearing area. So it will work perfectly for what we need and it'll also speed it up a bit more. Right. This is my little infill piece. I've just sanded this just on the belt sander, added a 10 mil hole on the underside and then just put a slight radius in there. That, all just slightly oversized, but it fits in there beautifully. This back edge I'll flush in, I'll do that with a bit of sandpaper and this radius in here, I'll do that with a little bit of a dowel. Right, I've got myself a little tub of water here. The trick with using the super glue is to damp down the part that you want to glue that looks pretty good well, that's just water all right happy with that i'll flush this in with the sandpaper now just to smooth it all in there's a few really light little gaps around the edges and then we'll use the super glue again with some of the dust from the sanding just to fill those in and smooth that all off got a bit close to my um, countersunk hole on the underneath so I've given that a little bit of glue and dust as you've just seen there. That feels lovely and smooth. Once that's been primed ready for paint I'll give it a final flat back and that is all but disappeared now. There's literally not a... That's beautifully smooth. Right I'll work my way around now into this little radius edge in here. Right, I've got myself a piece of stainless bar bit tight in here. Right, a little dob of glue around the edge. Sweep some of that dust over the top. Right, that looks pretty good in there. It's actually a little ding here from where the bolt handle has been wedging on it. Might as well sand that out while we're there. Right, that looks rough as, but that's beautifully smooth. There's no voids in here at all. And actually that little plug that I made to fit in there was pretty close. It's a bit of a shame that I got a bit close to my drilled hole from underneath that's covering up the bolt head. But once this is painted and done, Jobs be a good one. The same little process I'm going to do now with this piece here. I'm just going to give this a quick going over with 1200 grit around the glue line. And then with these little bits here, these voids, I'll do the same with the super glue and the dust that we generate. I say it's a perfectly sound, strong joint. And if we were going to do a full refurb on this, then of course we'd be doing it completely differently. But right, it's the next day. As you can see, the plans change slightly as per usual. I've started to strip it back. I've still got a fair bit more cleaning up to do, but I don't need to go too mad because I am still going to paint it. It looked pretty bad 
when it was still lacquered and in stain. I've taken it back to the bare wood now and this joint actually is really quite nice. There is no need for any additional filler or anything like that. Now I've taken it back a tiny bit. There was also a surprising amount of dings and bashes in the fore end. There was also a few dings in the sides of the rear end as well. Um, and as I'd exposed bare wood already on the repair on the back side here, I thought, well, I might as well strip it right back. I've decided I'm also going to put in a couple of finger grooves. I've started just to add a little bit more depth in the rear of the grip here to build in somewhat of a palm swell. I'm quite limited to what I can do because of the fixing stud that goes through. So I'm very limited, but I can certainly make some improvements on that. I'm also going to remove some wood from the trigger lead in here. It doesn't feel particularly nice and you have to use more of the tip of your finger than I'd really like. The next video I'm going to put an accessory rail up the front still. I'm then after that going to do the cheek piece, the comb hardware as well. And then once that's done, we'll fit the new action to it and then we'll start comparing it against some far more expensive guns. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see what an antique S200 can do against an Anschutz and Catran and maybe the Steyr as well, because I think you might well be surprised. So I think from there on, guys, we'll call that good. I'll just get some photos up of the repair so you can just see what it looks like. And I'll catch you in the next one.